All right, just give everybody a couple of minutes to get here. Sorry for the echo. I swear you take one week off from playing with Facebook and, or at least doing lives. And seriously, it all feels completely foreign. And I think that's more me and not Facebook's fault this time. But anyway, as you are joining, if you would comment that you're here, it's a little hard to see who's actually watching or if anyone's watching. Hey, Janie, thank you. All right, good. So I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So um, thank you for finding me again this week. I am really sorry about last week. We um, had a lot going on during the week and then we were leaving town and I just, I just couldn't. So anyway, I am sorry for that and I appreciate you joining me again tonight. So, if you are joining me for the first time, my name is Christy Hillock. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Murray, Utah, which is a suburb of Salt Lake City. Um, let's see what else. I have been a demonstrator for two and a half years, I think, and have been stamping for probably eight years fairly consistently and then I actually remember doing stamping and heat embossing with my mom when I was growing up so that was fun to kind of get back to that when I first started again. Um, I think that's probably enough about me. I just have a couple things I want to show you. So the mini catalog starts in August for all of our customers but in July demonstrators can pre-order and so the pre-order period is a huge perk of being a demonstrator. And my pre-order just came today, so I'm really excited. I was waiting because I needed a designer series paper from the annual catalog to come back in stock before I could put in my order. Um, so it, it went up yesterday and you can bet I expedited my entire order, which I've never done before, but it was really fun to get it overnight. So, so that's the mini catalog. I can't show you the inside. Um, because it hasn't been released yet. And then also in August and September we have celebration and you can pre-earn items from the celebration catalog. Get back down on the screen. There we go. Um, during the pre-order period as well. So I have a couple of things from the celebration catalog that I get to show you tonight too. So, and I'm going to try to make this quick because personally I think unboxings are a little bit tedious. Um, but you know, it's also kind of fun. So I have catalogs. If you need a catalog, please let me know. I would love to get one to you. And then just because this box is making it hard for me to show things, I'm going to just pull everything out and get the box out of the way. Um, so this is one of the Christmas specialty papers. It's called Whimsy and Wonder. And it's got really pretty silver. Let's see. They, oh, they actually did. So this one has Blushing Bride, Crumb Cake, Mint Macaron, Misty Moonlight, Mossy Meadow, and Polished Pink. And it is, I think it's going to be really fun. I'm not much for the sort of goofy, um, non-traditional colors for holidays, for Christmas. But I thought this paper was going to be great for just winter in general and then it's just really pretty I don't know cheerful so anyway that's this one and I only ordered a couple of the papers to get started this one is called Harvest Meadow and I haven't opened it so I'm not going to show you because this package is different um and then this is one of the celebration papers and it's penguins and they are so stinking cute and they go with a bundle that's in the holiday mini catalog and you can bet I'm going to be doing a class with the penguin bundle and this paper because I I don't know I don't usually go for cutesy but I think it's it's really fun hey Aunt Pat I'm glad you like that paper and then this is another freebie out of the celebration and it goes with the hand penned bundle in the annual catalog and again it's sealed so I can't get into it but it's all black and white and I think it's really pretty there's that. And then, let's see, I got 
the Nature's Harvest Bundle, which has really pretty sentiments, and then it also has really nice dyes. So let me pull those out and show you. And you'll be seeing all of this stuff in weeks to come too. Um, but since it's new to me, I just figured we could open it together. So these dyes, there's a couple of labels, but then the rest of it is just kind of the foliage and the flowers. And I just thought it was so gorgeous and perfect for the end of summer, which let me just tell you, it's over a hundred degrees here and it's not really cooling down at night and I cannot wait for fall. <laughs> I don't do well with summer anyway. And this is, I don't know if it's actually the hottest summer on record, but seriously, it's so hot. I just can't take it. We were in Texas at my parents and it was in the 80s there and we got rain and it was really nice. And then I got back home to the hundreds and I'm ready to turn right around. I also got the gorgeous leaves bundle. I really wanted to order most of the things in the catalog, but obviously that's not realistic. So um, this is where I started. Um, but these leaf dyes are really pretty. So that's that. And then they had a couple of new embossing folders. And this one is timber. And I just think that's going to be really fun to play with for so many different things. And then this stamp set was also a freebie. And I think it's pretty cute. So anyway, things to come. Um, and yes, it's brutally hot. I mean, you know, we have central air conditioning, so it's okay. We can survive. But, um, yeah, it's just not supposed to be this miserable for this long. So we're not even cooling down. I mean, that's, that's really atypical. So, all right. So here is what we are. Let me make sure I didn't have anything else to tell you. Saturday's the last day to sign up for the Adventure Begins Paper Pumpkin Kit. And I don't have anything cute and pretty printed out to show you with that. But it is the, um, the banner picture on the, on my page here and I think it's going to be really nice there's some layering in it um nice naturey color kind of colors lots of greens and yellows um so don't miss that subscribe no later than Saturday and I think that's it okay so we're gonna make this little card and I know when I had the hippo and friends bundle out a couple of weeks ago I said I don't go out for cutesy and I honestly really don't but I love that stamp set. I just think it's funny. And I really wanted to make a shaker card for you. I've been wanting to do that for a while and I included a shaker card in the class to go that, um, that I was selling in June, the art and bloom, I think is what it was. And so I just wanted to make one here and kind of show how the whole thing works. So this one is fiddly. Tonight's live is going to be a little bit longer than normal. So let's get started. The first thing um, that we're going to do, and I actually already did the die cutting, um, but I took a piece of Highland Heather and ran it through my die cutting machine with, let's see, you can see here the little circles and they're stitched, which is wonderful. And it's called Picture This. And then I have just a bag of the circles that pop out so that I can use them for other things. So that's what we're doing here. And then I took a piece of Whisper White, or sorry, Basic White. I am out of practice. I Today was the first day I've even stamped anything in over a week, week and a half. I don't know. Having my kids home is really, I mean, Emily's always here, but Jonah doesn't do well being bored and so... My time in the afternoon while she's napping has not so much been my time. <laughs> so we are gonna use a smoky slate card base and then the Hippo Happiness stamps. We actually aren't even using the dies today. So what I'm going to do to try to show you how I like to go about this with the um, the way the circles are so that everything gets lined up. I'm just going to set my stamps in each little circle 
And like I said, this card is a lot more fiddly than what I usually make on here. So we'll see how this goes because lining these things up is also a little bit of a challenge when you can't get right over the stamps, which my camera is where my head should be for that. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Be patient. Um, and it also uses a lot more colors than I usually would incorporate just because that gets a little challenging for you to reproduce. Sorry, there's a little hair on here. Okay, so this set, um, it's like three-step stamping really by the time you get done. So um, we will start with the little butterfly, I think. No, I'm going to save the butterfly for last actually. So we'll start with the hippo. And the hippo I'm going to do in smoky slate and basic gray. So basic gray is a really nice color. It um, It's dark and it shows up really well, but it's not quite as stark a contrast as the, um, you know, just the memento black can be. Okay, so we're going to do that little guy first and then I'm going to come over with the next part of the hippo and I'll ink it up in the smoky slate again but I'm actually going to stamp off once and then here's where the lining up starts being a thing. Right, we pulled that one off anyway. So, and then here is where the three step comes in because now we need to get our little hippo's face on here. And you probably remember when I did the hippo baby card, we did all three parts of the hippo. Um, so today we're just going to repeat that with the sheep and the unicorn as well. Um, if I can find the little faces, oh my goodness, there. Okay, so to get his face, I'm going to switch over to my basic gray. And this guy, I line up with the nostrils. We sort of got there, that's all right. Okay, basic gray is going to come back in here in a minute, but for the moment, I'm going to close that one up. So, how's Ohio been, Aunt Pat? Is it hot there? I, I know the Pacific Northwest has been hit really, really hard, but I haven't really paid much attention to the rest of the country. I was reading an article today about Chicago and global warming and what that's doing there, so that was kind of interesting. Um, because it's making their lake lower, but their river higher. So I don't know. It's very confusing. They're being adversely affected in opposite directions, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but apparently that's what it is. All right. So this is polished pink for my little unicorn. So the downside to having all of this stamping to do is that I feel like I'm just sitting in silence and that's kind of boring, but I, so I'm just not that good at filling space with random chit chat. So I would love to see your comments if you guys have anything exciting going on in your worlds. I'm also going to stamp off, this is Blushing Bride, but I'm just going to stamp off with, um, the little bit that's there and then I'm also going to pop off that there we go okay so that's it for blushing bride and I'm also
also limited in how many blocks I have, so we're having to clean as we go. Um, now the horsey space, or unicorn, whatever you choose to see her as, um, is kind of angled. So that was confusing as I was making my first version of this today. But I got it figured out, and I think... It's not really too hard. You just have to look carefully through all of these stamps. There's that. So do you have air conditioning, Aunt Pat? Because 90s would be horrible without. And then 72 sounds, oh my gosh, so lovely. But I'm glad you're back out of the really bad heat, too. And it just, it's so draining. I mean, at least when it's cold, you just put on some more clothes. But I just, I don't know, I'm not up for all of the heat. Okay, for the little sheep, we're going to use Rich Razzleberry. I also don't usually incorporate this many colors into a single card, and so trying to figure out what goes, especially since these are not nature's colors, was interesting, but I think it I think it turns out pretty good. So with that said, I didn't want um, to try to figure out another color with the rich razzleberry. So I'm just stamping it off twice. And then I get a much lighter look, but still in the same tone, shade. I'm not sure what you would call that. So we've had concrete work going on on the front of our house all summer. And it's been really hard to get concrete for him. <clears throat> so he finally has gotten, it took three pours because he was doing several steps and then the sidewalk. And so he pulled the cover off of the steps yesterday or this morning. And I got to use my front door for the first time in, I don't know, six weeks maybe. <laughs> it feels like it's been forever which is partly because my back door sticks and so it's a lot harder to go that way. Um, but I'm so excited with how it turned out. I think that I got that about right. There we go. So <clears throat> what that means is that now I get to start on the next part, which is actually probably going to be Joe, but we've got to dig out a window well so that we can put in a new window down there. But it has made our basement so nice. It's so much brighter. And that's without the bigger window. So once the window is taken care of, then we're hoping to paint and re-carpet down here and just in general make, make the basement a really happy place to be. When I first moved here, I did not understand why all of the basements had windows because I'm from tornado country. <laughs> you don't do that. That's not what you're trying to accomplish with a basement. So anyway, it's taken some getting used to. Um, and with the window actually being a window here, it doesn't feel so dungeony downstairs, which is a, a huge change. So... And shade, yes, shade makes a little difference, but we were sitting out in this, the shade this afternoon, and I mean, I just can't, you know, 100 degrees and shade is not as much as you need, but I'm glad that you've got a lot of trees. That makes, makes everything so much nicer. Oh, well, her little eye is kind of up in her hair, but I guess that's okay. So... I took the kids to the library today because they have air conditioning that's, you know, actually running at a much higher level than mine does. So that was a nice little reprieve too. Um, okay, we're gonna do this little balloon. And I'm using, 
using Daffodil Delight. I don't know if I said this guy was um, Gorgeous Grape and Highland Heather. And the balloon is going to be in Daffodil Delight. <clears throat> and I just feel like these little party people need balloons for their party, even though the sentiment on this card is actually just a hello. And Okay, then we have this little string, and I think I used Smoky Slate for that, and then I just need um, to mask it off a little bit, so this is not the best way to do it, but I don't see any other scrap paper, so... Forgive me while I rearrange. Um, so I'm just gonna stamp the little string like that. And I think that'll look okay. I can go back and adjust actually. So. <clears throat> yes, for sure. Ice cream shops are nice, but I, well, so Emily's had a fever all week. And so I was trying not to give her any dairy, which all the kid wants to eat is cereal ever. And so that's a little bit of a challenge, but um, anyway, we did end up going to a cookie shop here that also has fruit flavored creamy popsicles. Um, so yes. Frozen treats are crucial, and I just can't hardly stand my kids shopping, so we just don't do that. But anyway, she's been really sweet. She just wants to cuddle. It's kind of sad, but I think she's finally on the mend, so that's good. So I've had about as much as I can manage of trying to just take a slower pace and also have, you know, limited options as far as seeing people and going places. So this is just like a little kind of starburst stamp. I really like things like this just to add texture without detracting from what's going on in the rest of the card. So that is now the you know, basically almost all of the stamping that we're doing. So what I'm going to do now is just take the cutout, the die cut piece and flip it over. So that's the first thing, make sure you're working on the right side. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't been a fan myself. Well, I don't drink milk anyway, but I have just never really found a milk substitute that I liked very well. And so I haven't, ever kept them in the house um but yeah she might actually be willing to go with some of that um we call things special drinks and so we've been doing lots of those trying to keep her hydrated and pushing water and you know poor baby you can just tell she's just not herself so what I just did, I've got a piece of window sheet and I just trimmed down so that it's not overlapping the other um, circles. And we're just going to make this bottom one into our shaker. So I'm going to take my stamp and seal here and just go around this circle so that the seal can adhere, or sorry, the window sheet can adhere to the Highland Heather. And then I will put this back on. But you know, the heat makes it virtually impossible to do anything. I mean, I didn't cook today like I should have because I just wasn't feeling it. So, mm, let's see, that's a little lower than I wanted it to be. But I think that's how we're gonna, we're gonna roll with it. 
it should be okay. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is take, these are our foam adhesive strips. And they're really nice because you can make them whatever length you need them to be. And create just this little pocket, basically. Um, so you wanna go close around your window, but not so close that all you see when you look into it is, you know, the foam strips. So, I'm just gonna snip this so that the edges join. And now I'm gonna take the rest of this strip, ooh, and stick it all over the place, and use it instead of regular dimensionals. And the reason I'm doing that is that the dimensionals are a slightly different thickness than um, what these are. So when I made one of these recently, I realized that it was not very evenly adhered. And generally I'm not super concerned about things like that, but I did want this to be a little more even than that turned out to be. So I think that's pretty much got it. We will just piece and go just right or right in between those two windows okay so now I'm going to get rid of all of my little strips here and the trick to this which I should have done already but you know this is this how I roll don't worry about doing things in the right order. I'm going to take the sequence for everything and put, sorry, that plastic is kind of annoying to listen to. Maybe not that many. Um, and these are staticky. I also probably could have used our little embossing buddy to get rid of some of the static on that window sheet, but it ends up working itself out, so. Okay, I think that is enough on the sequence. And now, I'm just gonna use my scissors to knock these guys down off the adhesive. There we go. Okay. Now what I want to do, and this is where it's tricky, so this is why having lined it up really carefully before was important. Um, so the measurements on this are just an eighth of an inch different. But it worked, so there you go. And now, and then you can just kind of get those down off of our little unicorn, who I forgot to give his horn, so. You know, he's a horse. We've got a unicorn on one and a horse on the other, and I bet you nobody's gonna know the difference. So, fortunately, my sentiment is based on the butterfly rather than the unicorn. Um, that is kind of where the cutesy gets to just more than I can take on this stamp set. Oh, thank you. Thanks for all the likes. Um, this, some of the sentiments are very punny, which is rarely my speed. So the sentiment that I'm going to use is fluttering by just to say hi. And I thought that went really well with our cute little butterfly. So I've got just a three quarter inch strip of um, basic white here that I will just stamp on. And I think that's straight. Good enough. Okay, and I'm going to take my banner pick-a-punch thing here, and I love this. It's so much easier than trying to flag a banner with scissors. Um, so you just line it up in there and punch it, and you have the cute little flag. And then what I will do 
so I don't want this sentiment to cover up too much of my little critters. So I am just going to cut this right off like that. And then figure out where to stick some adhesive. And it really doesn't take too much. The seal is really nice and strong. And there it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was, like I said, a little, a little more stamping and a little less on some of the other things. Um, but I'm, I really have wanted to show you how to do this shaker card. So I hope you enjoy that. If you try this or something similar, I hope you will share with me. And, um, oh, thank you, Janie. I watch a lot of other demonstrators. Oh, hey, Julie, I didn't realize you were on here. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, I watch a lot of other demonstrators to get ideas. So I have to give credit, but this, I think, was really my own design. I can't think of seeing this anywhere else. So anyway, um, I really appreciate you all being here, whether you're catching me live or watching the replay later on. I will also be posting this over to YouTube so that our friends who are not on Facebook can still watch. And I would love it if you like and share. And if you do share, make sure you comment shared on this video so that I know um, because it won't always let me see who shares. So whoever shares next week, I'll draw a name and someone will win this and three other cards. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate you. And if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Okay, have a good one. Bye.